Florida. It's time to get ready to race. It's the Formula One Miami Grand Prix. Rev up your engine, South Florida. Miami for sure uh, on top of the list. The biggest stars in the world is coming to town for the big party. But this F1 explosion in America wasn't born in Miami. The rebirth started right here at this amazing track in Austin, Texas. The energy around the track is, is what has really made this special. Now this sport's racing to take over America from the futuristic circuit of Hard Rock to speeding 200 miles per hour down the famous Las Vegas Strip. Tonight, we're taking you straight to the starting grid. Get ready, Miami. It's lights out and away we go. This is the Local 10 Live Special, Ready to Race. Sponsored by the Boca Raton. Five reimagined hotels, one iconic resort. Now, live from Hard Rock Stadium, here's Local 10 Sports Director, Will Manzo. Good evening, South Florida. We are trackside here in Miami Gardens, getting ready for the 2024 Formula One Crypto.com Miami Grand Prix. The 20 drivers were out on the track today for practice and for qualifying for Saturday's sprint race. Hundreds of thousands of fans here at Hard Rock will see a lot of racing throughout the weekend. Among those fans, the big stars already on the track. Tom Brady won a bunch of games playing quarterback against the Dolphins here at Hard Rock Stadium. Now back to see Formula One up close in the garage, walking around the paddock. And superstar musician Ed Sheeran also here for this fantastic Friday. Welcome to the Local Tens Ready to Race. I'm Will Manso. What a great weekend ahead here for South Florida, the showcase of F1. And so many storylines surround this weekend. Max Verstappen's dominance, can it continue? The addition of Saturday's sprint race, and of course, Sunday's Miami Grand Prix. The Miami Grand Prix has sprinted out over its first two years on the F1 schedule, showcasing a unique South Florida experience. From the vibrant campus, stars around race weekend, and the flavor that makes Miami so special. Miami, Miami. But as year three has arrived, it is a different kind of sprint taking center stage. There's meaningful racing action every single day. Tyler Epp is the president of the Miami Grand Prix, and he explained to me the newest addition to the event, the debut of the first F1 sprint in the Americas, a high octane event on Saturday that pushes drivers to the limit from start to finish without any pit stops. It's the same drivers, the same cars, the same teams that race on Sundays, but it's in a shorter, more confined environment that's supposed to be even more fan friendly and more involved. So think of it like the appetizer before the meal. This gives us qualifying action, meaningful qualifying action on Friday, a different type of racing experience on Saturday for the fan, and then obviously the official Grand Prix on Sundays. And along with the sprint comes the growth of everything around the track. So much of what the fans get to see for a grandstand ticket or campus pass goes beyond just sitting in one spot watching the cars. Part of the evolution of this, the growth, the other, the, the improvement, so to speak, each year of trying to, especially for the fan experience and what they get. Yeah, you said it exactly right. I would say going into the third year, there was even a bigger emphasis on the campus experience. In the States, you're used to sitting in a stadium and you're used to being able to see all the action out in front of you. So putting it together a 19 turn course where you don't see the car for a while is a little bit confusing, right, for, the, for a traditional U.S. fan. So the idea is let's give you different ways to view the action so you feel like you can see it all together. That's an opportunity for us to showcase the campus, the food, the beverage, the experience, the culture of Miami that we try to bring onto this campus. While there are many changes around the campus that make year three of the Miami Grand Prix bigger and better, one of the changes you'll see is behind the scenes with the addition of the newest ambassador, Gunther Steiner. Good for everybody, you know, it's good for the community, but it's good for F1 because F1 wants to come here. Steiner is happy to be in the sun and fun of Miami for race weekend. Fourth and fifth, but Gene. Race fans enjoyed the outspoken Steiner on the Netflix hit show Drive to Survive. Yeah, was was say, yeah. And when we spoke recently, he explained to me why drivers and teams are so excited to see Miami on the schedule. F1 calendar with 24 races is quite demanding. And 
what would you go to a nice place or to a bad place? Yeah. I would prefer the nice place. Miami, and Miami, Miami is for well. sure on top of, uh, on top of the list. It's the biggest show. It's uh, part of his job as the Miami Grand Prix ambassador isn't just to promote the event, but to list ways on how it can continue to grow and get better. When you come into something new, uh, uh, you have always more naysayers than yaysayers, in my opinion. That is not, but that's generally, some yeah. people don't like new stuff, you know, they, oh, it's not like the other place, but doing it different doesn't mean it's better or worse, it's just different. And for, that is what Miami for me was, and that's for I quite like this place. It happens everywhere. When you do the first race somewhere, if you come out of that first race and say you have done everything perfect, you're not doing a good job, because there is things you need to improve, and the first year is the most difficult one, and then you build up. And now the latest version of the Miami Grand Prix has arrived to Hard Rock Stadium. The hope from Steiner F and everyone involved with the event is that fans will take notice when they come to race weekend that Miami is unlike any other stop in F1. We think we're different, right? And we think we offer a different experience. And a large credit, credit of that is the fact that we get to do it in Miami, right? It's such a fantastic cultural diverse city that we get to put it on this car. Uh, Miami loves to be on this play. That'll be the case here with the world-class racing behind me at Hard Rock Stadium and the world-class parties. We know about that. No one that I know knows that better than our Alexis Frazier in Miami with much more on the VIP access, where to go. What's the fun stuff? What do you got for us, Alexis? All right, Will. Well, this, we are on Miami Beach, literally. This is where the horsepower meets the star power. And a wise man once said, I'm taking my talents to South Beach. So Chef Carbone is following suit. He has set up a pop-up restaurant here, and it'll be here all weekend long. And of course, what will Miami be without a red carpet full of stars? So coming up, I'm going to tell you how you can get your ticket here and about some other parties and installations that you don't want to miss. Alexis, looking forward to that. We know you've got us covered. Again, that is part of the weekend, the excitement for the fans that are here, the parties around South Florida. Another part of it, though, those drivers. Max Verstappen, that's where you've got to start when you talk about the drivers. Verstappen has just been dominant. We saw him out on the course today. The Red Bull driver has won 21 of the last 23 races, three straight driving titles. But despite the amazing success of the track, Max is a pretty private guy. He's kept his life private. How has he done it? What makes him tick? Our Christian De La Rosa is live in Winwood with more on the mystery surrounding Max and also the other star drivers on the grid. Christian. That's right, Will. How you doing? Listen, we're coming to you live from the fan zone here in Winwood. It is Max Verstappen territory. And as you said, the Max himself could be described as a little reserved, you might say, but he is speaking his mind as we are meeting him face to face along with a bunch of the other F1 stars. I enjoy being in Miami. The stars of Formula One. Take off! It's a massive privilege to be able to be here. Living their best Miami life. <laughs> Local 10 News getting you the face-to-face -face access as they get ready to race. Yeah, hopefully we can keep that momentum going. He's the man pushing the limits. He wins the Miami Grand Prix. Verstappen in Miami. It's always important to win. It doesn't matter, of course, where you are. He's no doubt the favorite to win this weekend. He's everybody's concern. His dominance? Ominous. We obviously want to beat each other. We're rivals on track and hate each other. Everyone hates each other on track. Lando Norris and Sergio Checo Perez coming second and third in the latest F1 race, vying to end for Stappen Street. For this weekend, we have quite a big upgrade on the car. But the McLaren racer asked about Miami's track, not afraid to admit. It's not, it's not my favorite circuit. And you have some very slow speed, bumpy kind of places. So it's, it's a challenge. Go, come on, man, push, man. Checo telling us it'll be a game of strategy to dethrone his Red Bull team and training partner. Be able to maximize the, the full performance of the car. That will be the target. Also playing rival in this race. It's quite hot. Temperature is going to be quite a big challenge. Trying their street art ability at Winwood's Museum of Graffiti. The stakes could not be higher. 
Coke, Steak F1 teams Valtteri Bottas and Zhou Guan Yu. So I want to put myself on. They have yet to score a point this season. Last race, the car decided to stop. <laughs> the pressure is on, as many drivers' contracts are soon to expire. You're looking at all the options. Pretty relaxed about it. When you don't have a, a paper signed, uh, everything is an option. Ferrari's Carlos Sainz with Inter Miami's Luis Suarez telling us he's not worried. I'm still confident, you know, that if I keep performing at the level that I'm performing, good, good things will come. Teammate Charles Leclerc trying his hand at American football with the Miami Dolphins. But as far as this Miami race goes... And in the last seven to eight months, we are the team that improved the most. Yes, he's driving. For now, all bets seem to be on the 26-year-old Dutchman appearing on this ad playing on his, at times, shy persona. The rest of the field remains determined, sharing their pre-race rituals with us. Cool bath. Just a nice massage. I have a little bit of like a pasta ragu. It's just coffee. No enchiladas, no tequila shots. No, unfortunately not. That's after the race. Pasta, ragu, no tomatoes, whatever float your boat. Make your bets, guys. I got a freebie from the Lando team, and this is where I'm putting my money on. We'll back to you. Betting against Verstappen. All right, Christian taking a chance on that one, but thanks so much for that story. Great to see all those drivers having a good time here in South Florida. We continue to have a good time. Don't go anywhere when we come back here at Local Ted's ready to race. How about we leave South Florida for a moment and head out to the birthplace of the Formula One Renaissance in America? A track in Texas led the way for F1 coming here to Hard Rock. We take you there. Plus, Porsche power. I found out there's a whole lot more to racing than just hitting the gas. You are watching Local 10 Special, ready to race. You're watching Local 10's Ready to Race. You're watching Local 10's Ready to Race. Welcome back to our Local 10 special, Ready to Race. Today, the fans starting to work their way in to pack the Hard Rock circuit. You know, some people I talked to today say the people watching, the walking around, the atmosphere almost as good as that world-class racing. Well, Formula One is in the midst of an American explosion. It has been exciting to watch here at the Miami Grand Prix. Now in its third year, you've got Las Vegas, of course, on the strip, what they were able to do in year one. But how about what has happened in Austin, Texas, where that renaissance started? I had to go there to find out why. Austin, a city known for its vibrant culture, part college town, but also part capital city. <laughs> known as the live music capital of the world. You learn that right away when arriving at the airport. But it's the arrival of F1 that has changed the modern history and impact of this city and helped refuel the sport in the U.S. This is the Circuit of the Americas, opened back in 2012 with the primary focus of bringing Formula One back to the United States. Not only has the United States Grand Prix here at Austin become a big part of the circuit, it has thrived. They always say it's bigger in Texas. This race has proven that. That was a huge part of it, was can you build something that's uniquely designed specifically for Formula One racing? No one has seen the transformation of the United States Grand Prix into becoming a premier event more than Bobby Epstein, who was instrumental in making it happen as the chairman and co-founder. I think the energy around the track is, is what um, has really made this special. And, and it's a combination of both the racing and the entertainment and the crowd, and just having the massive crowds that we have allows us to put on so much more than just the race. Over a decade later, Coda keeps growing. As you'll see, we've got the track safety EMS. A tour of this massive property gives you just a glimpse of what makes this place so unique. The view all the way up to turn nine, and then you get the back straight away. So you've got all the way to turn 12, the other set of S's, which is turn 12 through about 16. So for fans, they want to get out here early. You really won't find anything else like this in F1. As the race begins, the elevation of 134 feet as you approach turn one. Some of the sight lines here, you can see seven, eight, nine, in some places, 10 turns from one seat. In the middle of the action is food, drinks, and music everywhere throughout the weekend. You can't do things smaller halfway in Texas. A massive super stage concert wraps up every race weekend. And we have a nice canvas for it. 
and uh, and it's allowed us the flexibility to build really a, a walking experience. You know, you don't just take your seat and this is where you are. It's it's I want to go explore. The fan experience has been key for the success here, and it's paid off. A recent honor from F1 is so prized that it's only handled with the utmost of care. Inside this case sits the Event Spectacle Award for 2023 in Formula One. What that means is the United States Grand Prix last year was not just selected the top event for the racing, but for the fan experience and atmosphere. One of the biggest reasons, literally, for the fan experience is a massive tower in the center of Coda that fans can access with a ticket to the race. The Coda Tower is 251 feet high. Might as well take the steps. Actually, on second thought, Let's take the elevator. Wow. When you step out, it definitely feels every bit 251 feet high. There's even a uh, glass bottom area that you could look down to the track if you're brave enough, but it gives you just incredible views, not just along the track, but all along Austin. You'll notice the red, white, and blue, plus stars and stripes. It highlights the pride of Texas, the U.S., and it reinforces the importance this race has made in the rebirth of F1 in America. I decided though to take the stairs down the tower this time around just to get my steps in because we were about to learn another side of what makes Austin and race weekend so special. The food. We got a beef rib alert. Woo! No stop in Austin is complete without barbecue at Terry Black's. How big is Terry Black's barbecue? We'll put it this way. Every year, tens of thousands of people come here to Austin to experience the United States Grand Prix. But the first place many of them go to isn't to check into the hotel. It's not to go to the track itself to check that out. It's to come here to Terry Black's to experience the best Texas barbecue. There's no such thing as too much food here. They sell it by the thousands of pounds daily, and the lines are constant come race week. F1 week is our Super Bowl week. We did a million dollars in sales oh, in one week. God. That's never been done before. <laughs> it's never been done. The proof is in the taste. I would come to Austin not even for F1 just for this. This place has perfected barbecue. People will wait in rain, sleet, they don't care. They're going to be here, and then they're going to come in here, and they're going to tell us that this is the best barbecue that they've ever had. Well, listen, my first time here is the best barbecue I've ever yeah. had. I can tell you that. That means it takes intense and constant dedication in the smokehouse. So check it out, guys. This is going to be, again, oh, man. the last leg of the race. Ooh. As you can see, my babies are swaddled right now, guys, right? <laughs> That's what over 4,000 pounds of meat. In one day. In one busy Saturday. Isn't that crazy to think it's, about, it's right? It's insane. Okay, after all that food, there's only one way to work it off in Austin. Dancing. For many, that means going to the famous Broken Spoke, where even celebrities have come for over 60 years. Every time to listen to local music and dance or learn how to dance. Click, quick, slow. Hand fun. Let it grow in this team. You do it from long play. I'm intimidated. Very intimidated. Quick, quick, touch. Very good, guys. Hell yeah! This crash course in the two-step takes two. Honky Jonk dancing is different than any other dancing you do. It's very casual. It's a much closer and it is more fun. Grab a partner and go. So through this door past the best country music dancers in the world. As we just found out though, except me. There's no doubt about it. Austin is unlike any other stop on the F1 schedule. And as cities like Miami grow their race and Las Vegas tries to build and learn off its initial race, Austin is the standard in the U.S. Epstein says the key for any city is embracing its charm, which Austin has perfected. I think what's important is, is actually being done, which is embrace the local identity of where you are. You know, and Miami is so special from a destination standpoint, the international culture and, and the beach life uh, and the sun, and, and I think that they're doing a great job with that. No doubt Austin has its own unique flavor. And by the way, during the story, I mentioned the super stage, those concerts during the weekend. Well, it was announced this week by Coda. How about the two acts for this year's race? Sting and Eminem.
That is some big time fun headed to Coda. We've got more fun here though. A local 10's ready to race when we come back. Have you ever watched these races and watched the Miami Grand Prix and thought to yourself, what's it like to be in a Formula One car, being a driver, going full throttle? I take the test in a Porsche coming your way. Meanwhile, the drivers aren't the only stars in town this weekend. The A-listers in town, the high octane parties. We've got your VIP access. Our local 10 special ready to race is just getting started. You're watching Local 10's Ready to Race. You're watching Local 10's Ready to Race. Welcome back to Ready to Race. You know, several different races throughout the weekends and events here at Hard Rock. Formula One, of course, you've got the F1 Academy, which is the division for young women. There's also the Porsche Carrera Cup. We saw the Porsches on the course today getting some work in speeding on by that roar, that power of Porsche. You know, recently I got a chance to feel that Porsche power. We traveled to Atlanta for the Porsche experience. This was just incredible. Now, it was a rainy day, I will tell you that, but it did not damper my excitement to get behind the wheel of those Porsches. They say the best Formula One racers excel in the elements. Anyone can drive fast on a dry track, but heavy rain changes everything. But I'm no F1 driver, and the thought of going high speed in the pouring rain had me a bit scared, to be honest. But I knew it was in good hands the moment I arrived at the Porsche Experience in Atlanta. You may recognize this palace to everything Porsche on the big screen. Sharp-eyed Marvel fans will recognize that it was used in the very popular Avengers series. When you get to one Porsche drive, you better be ready to drive. This is the North American headquarters to Porsche, and it's also one of the nine Porsche experiences in the entire world, only two of them in the U.S. Porsche Experience Atlanta is like Disney World for car enthusiasts. Two high-speed tracks and an off-road course, a spectacular museum, world-class dining, and did I say... Porsche. Manso? Oh, thank you. It's great to be here. Once I signed up and signed in, I learned right away I was going to get the chance to drive not one, but two of the high powered machines. Time to get briefed on how to drive these bad boys. Before I could take the track, I needed to learn the rules of the road. We've got two maps of the two tracks we have available. Boy, did I score a great teacher. Maybe we can learn how to drift. Michael Billy is the senior lead instructor at Porsche. Can you get to the top without spinning your tires. And a pro driver. All right, our chariot has arrived, or in this case, our Porsche has arrived. Yeah, this is the 911 Turbo S, the new generation 992, and it has the fastest zero to 60 in a production Porsche that they've ever put out. And that would be? Uh, 2.6 seconds, mm -hmm. officially. Am, am I doing that today? Yes. Here we go. Come follow us. With me behind the wheel and thankfully Michael riding shotgun, we hit the brand new West track. Porsche spent $50 million creating the 1.3 mile long circuit. Do not try this at home. This is closed training. If the slick conditions were not tough enough, the West track also has dramatic elevation changes and challenging turns that were designed to replicate famous corners at world-class circuits like Daytona and Le Mans. <laughs> But before I could lay down fast times, I needed to learn the basics of handling the 911. It's a whole lot more than hitting the gas. 110% out to 100, and then try to keep it. There. With practice and very patient down. coaching from Mike, I finally found my footing. The turn suddenly didn't seem as treacherous, and my confidence was growing with every lap. But my newfound driving skills were then tested even more. The West Track also has a 196 foot low friction circle or skid pad, perfect for drifting. If you dare. There's also an 8% grade ice slope. This is just crazy because you're feeling the car just flying everywhere. The best part about the Porsche experience is that anyone can do this. For about 750 bucks, you can get behind the wheel of a 911 and get a 90 minute private lesson from the pros. I then got to jump into this beautiful powder blue Taycan 
The Taycan is Porsche's all-electric speedster. This is incredible, number one, but what is what am I going to feel the fundamental difference in an all-electric car as opposed to the earlier one? Yeah, uh, right away you're going to notice the car is significantly heavier by about 1,500 pounds. You'll also have a distinct lack of an engine sound, so a lot of the audio cues that we were working on in the 911, we're going to have to not necessarily throw them out the window, but figure out a different way to kind of overcome that. The Taycan's added weight gave me added courage. This car really hugged the track, and despite the driving rain, I was able to gun it down the long, high-speed straightaway. <sighs> now, this is the part yeah. we have to lie on camera. How'd I do? You did great. Wonderful driver. Please keep doing this. No, see keep that? going I'm to track be a pro. Watch out, <laughs> F1. I'm coming your way. Okay, I'm not Max or Lewis just yet my time behind the wheel made me fully appreciate the skill of F1 drivers and the incredible Porsche engineer. I was thinking about that as I got the tour to the two-story museum inside Porsche Experience Atlanta. And I had a wonderful guy leading the way. This is a big place. You can get lost in here. No one knows more about Porsche than brand ambassador Will Harris. Uh, right here we have a GT3 RS. We have a 963. This is the off-road 911. This was the Volcano one, right? Yes. Uh, we walked through a gallery of some of the greatest race cars ever produced. These two right here are very, very cool. Does that say Aventura Mall? Yeah. On Top Gun cassette. Top Gun. Oh, I got the need for speed. The legendary makes and models from Porsche's nearly 100-year history. John Oates car, how about that? That's pretty cool. The 911 Targa. Man, that's beautiful. The mythical 356 Speedster, all on display. First Porsche right here, 356. This, wait, hold on, this is the first model of Porsche? Yeah. What I learned surprised me. It's not owning a Porsche. It's not just about going fast. It's about those special moments you create and about how you feel while driving a Porsche. It's time for the simulator here at the Porsche Experience Center. You know, we've been in plenty of these adventures on these tracks. Throughout the process, we went to Imola in Silverstone. We were just at Coda visiting for this show. So I'm going to go with a recommendation of Watkins Glen, and I'm taking that 911 GT3 off. I definitely have a checkered pass with these machines. The car is crying from me driving it. Oh, my God. I crashed out more times than I could count at Imola in Italy. Start braking. But with the training under my belt, I knew this time would be different. I, where were you when I needed you an Emola? <laughs> I was hitting the apex of corners, breaking at the right times in the turns, and perfectly hitting the gas, entering straightaways. Hold it steady. I was hungry to hit the track again, or was I just hungry? We headed upstairs to restaurant 356, where you can relax, enjoy five-star food and drinks, all while watching drivers whip through high-speed laps on the track. I'd say I got the ultimate Porsche experience. Out on the courses, in the simulator, learning some history now. Whew, catch my breath, relax. So the great view here inside the restaurant 356. Cheers to that. What an experience. A big thank you to the folks at the Porsche experience in Atlanta. But enough about me in a car. Let's see the real drivers. And no one better than Max Verstappen right now in F1. When we come back here, our local Ted's ready to race. The points leader, Verstappen, takes the track for practice and qualifying for tomorrow's sprint race. Plus, from Fort Lauderdale to Formula One, we sit down with the hometown star and only American on the grid, Logan Sargent, when our local 10 ready to race special comes right back. You're watching Local 10's Ready to Race. You're watching Local 10's Ready to Race. And welcome back to Local 10's special Ready to Race. The stars all hit the Hard Rock Circuit today for their first practice qualifying for the sprint race. And how about this? You guessed it. Max Verstappen will be on the pole for Saturday's sprint race. How incredible is this guy? The 20 racers will battle it out for 20 laps on the Hard Rock Circuit. The sprint is tomorrow. Of course, the Miami Grand Prix is on Sunday. So we call this the appetizer to all the action. Appetizers, drinks, parties, fun part of the weekend for the Miami Grand Prix. And as we showed you earlier, no better person to show you part of the celebration, the fun, the parties, the DJs, the atmosphere that own Alexis Fraser, who is live in Miami Beach with more on some of the parties hey. and who we may just see out this weekend. Alexis. 
Oh, well, Will, you won't believe it or not, I just seen Jimmy Butler walk this red carpet. So Miami, we know, is transforming for the fastest cars in the world, but that's not it. We're hosting the hottest celebrities, the hottest parties, and some top chefs. Thanks for stepping on the inside. It's off to the races in Miami Gardens. And around South Florida, we are kicking things into high gear. It's fun, it's elaborate. Even the food is a show. The adrenaline starts on the track, but doesn't end at the finish line. First up, Carbone Beach. It's the highlight of the year for us, for sure. From now until Sunday, this star-studded supper club on the sand will feature some of Chef Mario Carbone's famous dishes. But there is always a surprise, like who will perform every night. We have four amazing different genres represented this year. One, two, three. Hungry for more? At the Hard Rock Stadium, you can taste the thrill of Miami with every lap. All you need is a general admission ticket to get a taste of sweet liberty. It's going to be a big production. We're, we're looking forward to it. James Beard award-winning chef Michelle Bernstein dazzles with dishes. They'll be serving up drinks you love from the Miami Beach staple. We're right in the center of a lot of stuff, so we're bringing some new drinks this year. Some drinks from the mothership here on South Beach. Some drinks created just for the kind of Formula Ones. You can add some art to your race weekend at Wynwood Walls. It's a really unique opportunity because it puts you in the center of the action. Cash App is hosting a pop-up that will feature street art, live music, and so much more. Come to the Walls Friday, Saturday, and Sunday during Formula One race week. You get a complimentary ride on the Lady Buggy. And speaking of cars, there's no experience like the Mercedes Museum off State Road 7 in Lauderdale Lakes. If you want to see some of the wildest cars from the 80s and 90s, then you have to come to the Patina Collective Museum. You can check out this stretch limo that was made by Mercedes. And we're doing a limited uh, time period exhibition called the History of AMG, where we're showing over 45 historical AMG vehicles from all their racing history all the way to modern day. As the sun sets, the night heats up at Club 11. We have extra theatrics, performance, atmosphere models, body paint. We really do turn it up a notch to 11. With show-stopping performances from 50 Cent, ASAP Rocky, and for the closing party, Afro Jack. Most of the racers usually attend that night, so we've had the top racers come the last two years, and we're excited to see all of them again. All right, guys, we had to stop to smell the roses just for a few seconds. The beautiful ladies out here greeting the guests as they walk in. And of course, whether you're here for the races or the parties, South Florida has a little something for everyone. So I hope everyone's ready for that rush. <laughs> They are ready, Alexis. I, I can't wait to see all the celebrities. I know you're going to be covering it throughout the week and the fun, but today I, I want to get from you because you're our insider. Today I heard that Patrick Mahomes and Travis yes. Kelsey of the Chiefs will be here on Sunday and that Travis Kelsey may just bring a special guest. What are you hearing? Uh, okay, well, a little birdie told me that Travis Kelsey actually came to this party the first year it happened to Carbone Beach. So. He's familiar okay. with the area during Formula One, and if he brings his plus one, it is her to, everyone's thinking it's gonna be Taylor Swift. I'm sure everyone's now buying those F1 tickets because who doesn't want to spot Taylor Swift out in the wild with us normies? <laughs> yes. Swifties be ready. I'll have my cell phone ready for, for my kids and all the action on Sunday. Alexis, thanks for uh, the good party stuff okay. there for Miami If I Beach see them, I'll let coming. you know. <laughs> Please snap a picture and text me. I like it. All right. All right, let's get back to the racing from the parties and the funds to Logan Sargent. You know, many in South Florida are going to be rooting for one man. Logan is our guy. He's from right here in South Florida from Fort Lauderdale. He's the only American driver on the grid. This is him today at practice, and I will say he struggled today. He did. He qualified. He's going to start 20th. He has been struggling a bit. He needs a big performance this weekend on his hometown track, but he's got a lot of love, a lot of attention, including the attention this week from our own Janice Fernandez, who joins me now. And Janice, as he's been going through these ups and downs to come home, how positive was he? How were his spirits as he arrived? You know, you've met him before, so you know that he's a really positive guy. So his spirits are up. But look, he was very candid about the fact that he's had a lot of struggles this year, really has not gone the way that he's hoped. But something that you know very well about Logan is that he's very grounded because of his family. Yeah. And that is who he is leaning on. But he's also hoping that South Florida energy yeah. gives him that extra boost to really go through the finish line. for 23-year-old Logan Sargent. 
Fort Lauderdale native is racing Sunday as part of Williams Racing and has truly become the American face of F1. I love racing at home. It's um, it's next to none. It's special. The, every chance I get to interact with the, the U.S. audience is special. As drivers, we all have this self-expectation. Our own Will Manzo first met Logan last year in England when he was getting ready to kick off his debut season with Williams Racing. And he is still the humble, bright-eyed guy who grew up dreaming of being right where he is today. Hi, I'm Logan Sargent. He's known since a young age that his life was meant for the fast lane. Here comes Logan Sargent. But this year has been a challenging one, and Logan is candid about his struggles on the track. We haven't had a great start as a whole. Um, I think, um, you know, there's bits that we can clean up as a team. Uh, there's bits that, you know, I need to clean up on my side. If we get it all together, there's, uh, there's good potential on the table. But he's hoping that hometown energy will propel him. <laughs> the Williams Racing fan experience on Lincoln Road, a huge crowd of fans giving him a warm welcome. I miss him a lot. And he's changing things up this year. Instead of staying at a hotel, he's staying with his family at the home he grew up in. I played golf here a few days ago, and just to be in the sun again felt, felt amazing, and the weather looks amazing this weekend. But don't ask him for F1 tickets. How do you pick who gets to come and who has to sit back? <laughs> it's tough. Um, I mean, family comes first in the end of the day. Um, you know, everyone who's, you know, I've grown up with, everyone who's um, supported me since since the beginning. And um, I hate having to pick, but um, <laughs> I let my dad distribute it. And because he's our hometown driver, we wanted to make sure Logan felt right at home. We're obviously so proud of you. You're a hometown guy. And the Miami Heat is so proud of you. So they wanted to give this to you. Thank you so much. So you could take a look and hopefully you'll, it'll give you that inspiration you need on race day. That's really cool. Thank you very much. And you can check the back right there. That's it. <laughs> I, I, I love that, the jersey. What a smile. He was happy. Oh, he was so happy and he was so surprised. As you saw right there, huge Miami Heat fan, yep. huge Panthers fan, all, Absolutely. all things Big South time, Florida. Yeah. And you know what? At the end of the day, he is our hometown guy and we're rooting for him all the way. And who doesn't love an underdog story, right? Yeah, he's got, if you're going to start a turnaround, why not start it at home? Meanwhile, this is home. He's here. He gets to enjoy some home cooking. Did he tell you what his plans are after the race? Oh, yes. He says he is staying here in South Florida okay. for a whole week at his family's home and he's going to do what you'd expect any Florida boy to do. He's going to go to the beach yep. and he's going to do a lot more golfing. He's just so happy to be with yeah. his family. As you know, it gets very cold in England, so he's yes. enjoying his time he, here. He's been away for a long time since he was a kid, so it's good to see Logan smile. And again, we wish him the best this weekend for the Miami Grand Prix. When we come back, by the way, remember, we have still got the show coming up on Sunday. That's right here on Local 10. The Miami Grand Prix coverage begins at 3.30 this Sunday. Then stay tuned after the race for our Local 10 special finish line. So we have got you covered throughout the weekend. If you don't make it out here, trust me, just keep it on Local 10. But before then, you know, kids need to be at least 15 years old before they can get the learner's permit in Florida. But kids as young as 12 are speeding 130 miles per hour around the track at Homestead. Our Clay Ferro joins us shortly to introduce us to the future stars of the sport. Plus, kids have been collecting baseball cards for hundreds of years in America. But now racing cards are all the rage, and there's one card everyone is racing to get. We'll tell you all about it coming up on our Local 10 special, Ready to Race, right after this. You're watching Local 10's Ready to Race. You're watching Local 10's Ready to Race. And welcome back to Ready to Race. You know, all those little drivers with big dreams when they want to be race car drivers early on all start in the same place, racing carts as kids. But now, as early as their teens, early teens, kids are getting behind the wheel of real race cars. And that's what's happening in Homestead where they're learning in a fast pace. Our Clay Ferro is live in Homestead tonight with more on some future stars of the sport. Now, Will, you may be watching these F1 superstars and wondering to yourself, how do those drivers get there? Where it turns out you can get there from here, but you got to start early. The 200th race of the hybrid era goes to Max Verstappen. Before Max Verstappen raced his way to superstardom on the F1 stage, he was racing here at Homestead Miami Speedway and other tracks driving F4 as a teenager. My main role in, in racing is to, to pick and cultivate the next generation of Formula One and IndyCar drivers. 
So ideally I'll start the kids at ages 12, 13, 14 is even a little late. Eric Jensen trains drivers like Cash and Roman Felber, who were just 13 years old. We went to the Austin Grand Prix uh, for Formula One in 2022, and um, I just loved the speed of the cars, so I was like, how can we do this? It's a very fast pace. It's a lot of fun, and you just never know what the next day is going to bring. <laughs> one of the biggest differences between F1 and F4 is speed. Formula One cars can go over 220 miles an hour, but these certainly aren't slow. These cars top out at over 130 miles an hour, which, as you can see in here, is plenty fast. Point out the stuff that makes this so unique. Um, so this is the wishbone and everything. This is the suspension right here. The brakes are actually pretty big for a uh, open wheel car. The car is fully carbon fiber everywhere. Even though it's wrapped, it's fully carbon fiber everywhere, the whole car. And then the it has a front wing and a rear wing, so it's generating a little bit of downforce. Jensen says starting them at a young age is critical for drivers who have dreams of hitting the F1 stage. Well, it takes years to be a race car driver, so if you don't start at 13, 14, you're not going to be ready by the time you're 20, 21. You may be asking, is it safe for 13-year-olds to be driving cars like these? You know, it's it's like teaching a kid to ride a bike. you got to let them go. Um, and that's a tough moment when you let them go, but I don't mind letting them go here because I know inherently they're very safe. I try not to think about 130 miles an hour. I'm, I am I was a registered nurse. I worked in ICU, ER, OR. I did anesthesia. I've done it all. I've seen it all. And I try not to think about that because I need to be as supportive to them so they can follow their dream and their passion. So I just make sure I protect them as much as possible with the best gear and the best helmet. Uh, that we can get. <laughs> so to go to the podium and see the enjoyment that a young person gets from getting the most out of themselves, it's so much fun. And you got to know Cash and Roman right there. You're really going to get to know them coming up on our finish line special on Sunday after the race. Two great kids, big personalities. Well, we're going to hear a lot more from them coming up on Sunday. Clay, look forward to that. I am curious, though. We follow all sports, right? Baseball, football, kids get scouted for college and for the pro game. How do these young kids, do they get scouted? Are there eyes from you know companies looking at them as potential drivers down the road? You know, it's a great question. I, I think the one thing about this sport, it is a global sport, but it's also a small world when it comes to racing. And so a lot of these kids, they go out there, whether it's word of mouth or some of these coaches may just sign on and see how some of these kids finish. Then they go out and see them. So yeah. it's a little bit of that. Like, obviously, if you want to get into it, you can contact the right people. But yeah, they'll find talent wherever they can. Yeah, and I can't imagine there's many kids flying 130 miles per hour at 12 years old. Clay, great story. Thanks so much. We're not done here. When we come back here, our local tent's ready to race. How about trading cards? We've seen it for years in baseball, football. We all had them as kids, but now we are seeing some hot properties uh, up to a million dollars. That's right, the craze that is on F1 cards. When ready to race comes right back after this. You're watching Local Tents Ready to Race. You're watching Local 10s Ready to Race. As we come back to Ready to Race, Formula One continues growing in America. The demand for F1 gear also in overdrive. Fans have been scooping up merch from the racing Miami store at Aventura Mall this week. The store is packed with stuff from teams like Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes, McLaren, and trust me, we saw a lot of people in those kits here today at Hard Rock Stadium for the start of this Miami Grand Prix weekend. Now, along with Formula One merch comes something that's become very interesting and has really risen quickly in the sport. That is trading cards. Look, as kids, probably all of us at some point collected baseball cards, football cards, now kids in basketball cards. But F1 cards have become a hit. And trust me when I tell you, they are worth some big bucks. The popularity of F1 has grown faster than even the cars on the track. And more than ever, fans want to be part of anything that brings them closer to the drivers. Now, you don't have to be in a race to make that happen. 
You got people that are excited about the sport. They love F1. Enter F1 trading cards. Mark Amaret has watched it firsthand with his son, Aaron, who owns AA Mint Cards in Cooper City. Why is this such a big deal now? Yes, yeah, so this is all the, only the third year of F1 trading cards being produced by Topps. As uh, Formula One popularity rises, so do the cards. They want to rip open packs, they want to chase their favorite driver. Amaret's store here in South Florida happens to be one of the biggest and best in the U.S. How many are in existence? There's only 933. And the action on this particular night I visited was frantic. That's because it was the release of the latest Topps F1 card series. The rise of F1 trading cards, it really started with 2020. That's also when people, during COVID, people got into Drive to Survive. People just was like, okay, how can I get more into it? So we've seen an increase from there. Nice, out of 50 auto. Love it, F1 principle. And by increase, that also means money, lots of it. A box of 20 packs costs $299, but it can lead to pulling cards worth hundreds and thousands more. We have a Max Verstappen one of one Super Fractor from 2020. The, bot, the seller is currently asking a million dollars on that card. As crazy as it sounds, yes, even one million dollars for an F1 card is possible. First thing they want to do is they want to unlock the value by grading the cards. But to do that, you first have to open up some packs. I was down for that and testing my luck. So we rip it from the back like a candy bar. Well, I right, reveal the first one. The rush and anticipation had me feeling a bit like I was out on the track. Yeah. And then we hit a big Bravo one. Shung. Oh, Michael Schumacher. Oh, hey, hold up. To hit Schumacher specifically one is like one in every 5,000 packs. I'll take it. And the F1 fans who came through to be part of this growing trading card craze know it's more than just the money when it's all said and done. This product, these cards build that community for the F1 fans. Now, I couldn't take the Schumacher. That's okay. That's for the store. But I did leave with these two rookie cards. How about Logan Sargent and Juan Manuel Carrera? Logan, of course, we profiled earlier, our South Florida kid, and Juan Manuel Carrera, a local F2 driver. So I'll take that with me. Meanwhile, enjoy race weekend. Enjoy the coverage here at Local 10. And thanks so much for watching Ready to Race. Thank you for watching Local 10's Ready to Race, sponsored by the Boca Raton. Five reimagined hotels, one iconic resort.